Okay, hello. Uh, right, this is how to make a pinhole camera, but not just any old pinhole camera. This is one that works. One of the hassles you have with pinhole photography is all the variables. There's no auto switch on anything, stuff like that. So to what you try and do is get rid of all the variations that mean that exposure times and focal lengths and things like that can be different. And you end up with basically making a pinhole camera exactly the same. It's superb with kids, with university students, with uh, just people sort of like you encounter on the street accidentally, bus stops, whatever. Uh, what you need to do first of all is empty one of these, um, which I'll have a go at now. <sighs> okay, this is a can largish can, 500ml, and you do need to have 500ml. Different one. Aluminium, not steel. It's non-magnetic on a fridge. Aluminium is the proper word, it's just some English guy had a speech impediment, I think. What you then do is cut the inside off. Now, it's very easy to cut them apart, but you want to make it so it's a nice clean edge, and there is a way of doing it. One of these sorts of can openers, and then, just before the opening, may not work perfectly, I normally do this against my microwave at home. No, this hasn't worked, there we go. It normally goes pop, there we are. That there, he says, hoping it won't slice my finger the bits, is a completely clean edge on the inside. If you're going to end up doing um, yeah, pin off trophy for kids and stuff. You don't want to have bits of finger and blood at the bottom. It's sort of like a bit of a downer. So make it a nice clean edge. Aluminium can. Okay, washed out and emptied. Okay, on the base, upside down, you then get a piece of card. This is a bit of A4 card because luckily the outer diameter of these cans is A4. Hence that sort of can, not the smaller sort of like cola cans and stuff. You then cut some notches. Here we go. How many notches? How deep? Don't worry about it. Notches. Yeah, don't cut your finger off. Ah, like that. Fold it over. Come sat. So you've got notches. Okay, that's all I can describe it's notches. There we go. You then, this stuff. Elixir of life. Gaffer tape. Carpet tape. Duct tape. Carpet tape. I don't know anything. I don't know what it is. It's good though. But if you learn nothing else, learn how to tear it. You put your thumb on the corner there. Yeah, not on the side. Don't use scissors because that's a mess. Put your thumb there. Pull away like that. Wrap this around the base so it's not all wobbly. What we're doing is making a light proof lid. I've got to tell you for this dark, this pinhole camera. And we gun that on. Here we go, hopefully. Is it going to work? It might. Yes, there we are. So you've actually stuck that onto the base. You then crease these so it's horizontal. Then you make yourself a fairly bad circle of card. Here we go. Here's a bad circle of card. That makes it even worse. There we go. That goes on top. Like that. Three more bits of gaffer tape. One like that. One like that. Don't try and make it neat. Because, uh, well, you can't do right. One like that. Don't do it a crossway either. You need four bits of gaffer tape there. Three bits, like that, and then just for the fun of it, another bit right the way around, because it's usually someone else's gaffer tape, and you stick that right the way around the top, and it stops any excess light coming in. Gaffer tape isn't light tight, but it is waterproof if it's put on a dry container. So you then have your light proof cap that you then take off and put over the end. If like this one, let's say you get loads of kids doing it who are sort of wearing boxing gloves and they're making this sort of thing, or well, adults that matter, if it's a bit loose like that, you get a bit of insulation tape, like what I can't find the end of here. Oh no, there it is. And you just put it around the top edge, and it just means that like it makes it a bit wider, and so you don't have to rebuild the can lid. So that goes on there, it's nice and neat. That is your lightproof container with a lightproof lid. That distance from there to there is exactly the same with every single drink can, so you're not going to have to have variables of exposure time and stuff. Now what you've got to do is the dangerous bit where you're making the hole. And for that, it's exciting. It is. You need one of these. It's a pin. See a pin, pick it up, and all day long you've got a pin. And here it is. You get your pin, and you push it oh, halfway up the can, okay, so a point halfway up, roughly. You get the pin, 
and here's the maths, you push the pin in and then you take the pin out. Exciting stuff. Um, then you put the pin away. It is, does work out about 0.4 of a millimetre, 0.7 of a millimetre and that's about the right size. Don't worry about it though, maths is there to put people on pinhole photography. You then have got pinhole there, get yourself some insulation tape which is your shutter and it's sticky on one side, see? Sticky. And you fold it onto itself so you've got a sticky bit and a non-sticky bit. So you fold the sticky bit onto itself. So the sticky bit goes over the pinhole. Not to one side, yeah? So the flap goes over the pinhole. Sticky bit over the pinhole. Difficult to explain. Hopefully you got that. Camera. Then, a couple of things you can do is you can get yourself a rubber band. Actually, what it is, is a gravitational stabilisation device. And you get one of them, and then what you get is a pen, which I haven't got, so I'll come back to you in a second. Here's one, which has miraculously appeared. The pen you use for two reasons. First of all, if you're going to rest the camera on its side, like that, and it does make a really good way of doing it. It doesn't roll around the place if you position it with the pen, yeah? It keeps it stable. And the other thing is in the dark room when you take your photo, photo out and there's about 15 of your kids sort of like swarming around the place, you get to write their initials in the top corner with a pen. And then it doesn't sort of, uh, nobody fights over having the best one. So it's quite useful having a gravitational stabilisation device and a pen. And that's your camera. That kicks butt. It's got an angle of view of about 160 degrees, so it's really wide, whereas digital cameras can't cope with wide stuff, at least compacts can't. Uh, right, so we've got our pinhole camera, here it is, our beer can camera, and we want to put some photographic paper in, light sensitive, not the photographic paper that goes in your printers uh, near your computer and stuff, light sensitive. Now, light sensitive photographic paper is sensitive to blue light, it's not that sensitive to red light, so you can do this by switching the lights off at home and using a little red bike light, okay? That's absolutely fine. Ish. But you can do that. What I'm going to do now is just show you how to do it in the white light, which you can't do because it's light sensitive, and then we're going to do it actually for real. So it gives you an idea. Another reason for using beer cans, okay? Um, aluminium beer can. Is the internal diameter is five, five by seven inches Okay, I don't know about centimetres, you know, it's sort of like the length of the king's arm to his nose or something. Uh, five by seven, the internal diameter in here is five by seven. You don't have to start chopping up the photographic paper in the dark room into strips and all the rest with one pair of scissors, it's a mess. So, five by seven photographic paper fits these cameras perfectly with about a one centimetre gap. And that one centimetre gap is where the pinhole is. Okay, saves a lot of hassle. And that's why I use these cameras, nothing to do with what they contain, honest. You curl the photographic paper around, glossy side inwards, not glossy, don't use glossy paper, what did I say? Semi-matte, okay, but it's slightly glossier. Put it inside, like that, pump, it flaps. So there's a little gap here, a little gap of about a centimetre, which is in, in there. You can see there's a little gap there. That is where the pinhole needs to be, and the way of finding out where the pinhole is, it's basically you put your that finger there, your eye eye finger, yeah? Anybody knows they're weird primates of Madagascar? Nothing weird about eye eyes, I'm sure they think I'm pretty odd. And you basically, using that finger there, put it in there and you feel it scratching, because when you made the hole there's a little bit of scratchiness behind where you push the metal through. If you can feel it scratching, you know you're not obstructing the hole. Now if you're doing this with kids and stuff, they haven't got the uh, the thing like that isn't long enough, and so basically you need to check it for, for more because it's a bit of a weird instruction, don't block that and stuff. So check that the pinhole isn't uh, being obstructed by the photographic paper. Then you put the lid on. Then you don't take the photo, you don't take the lid off or anything else to do the picture. Okay, we're now going to go into night mode, which is actually when I look really weird, um, weirder. And basically we're under a red safe light sort of system, so I can take the photographic paper out and uh, uh, it'll uh, show you what to do anyway. Okay, ready, steady, go! There we go! So, spooky, huh? This is a, a red light, okay, but you can, as I say, use one of these things. A little bicycle si safe light, and that'd be fine. Photographic paper, called orthochromatic. It's a fancy word, but it's light sensitive.
comes in these boxes. You can get packets of 25 sheets or 100 sheets. Get them from the internet. Um, quite a laugh. There it is. So it's semi-matte. I try and use semi-matte, not glossy, because of internal reflections. So here we are. I'm putting it into the beer can. And I'm feeling with that finger, remember? The scratchiness. Feel it scratching. That's fine. Glossy side in. You then put the lid on. And your camera's ready to go. So let's go. Enough looking spooky. There we are. Me again. Looking, uh... Oh, less weird. Um, okay, that is now loaded with photographic paper and we're going to go out and we're going to do a little picture. The exposure times are going to vary, so you really have to do this near a dark room, which is a bit of a hassle, but you know, the way it goes. Or you can make your own dark room up at home. Um, and exposure times, if you're outside and sunlight's about four seconds. If you're inside, basically give it ages, but like you need sort of like daylight to do this by, ideally to stick to the right exposure times. We're going to go to a little um, hallway here in uh, St Paul's and uh, get some pictures because there's lots of nice lighting and stuff like that. So, Right, we now come to this area to draw a picture. Um, one thing about this area is it's got a lot of daylight. It's not outside, but there's a lot of window and a lot of daylight coming in. Exposure times, as I say, are going to vary from several seconds, even up to several minutes. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a picture uh, using this beer can uh, of me. So make sure the camera's relatively settled and then peel the sticker off. And it is a bit sort of like trial and error. What I normally do is peel the sticker off and put my thumb there. And then it's going to be me sort of trying to keep my head still over a period of X amount of time. I think I'm going to give it 12 seconds, but who knows. Let's go. Here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Comes after six. 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. Boom! There you are. Put your sticker back over the thing. Don't hold it up to the light. You think, oh, right. And then you get your sticker and then you put your sticker over the pinhole and see what happens, if anything. Grab it by the corner. It's the easiest way, he says, making a real pig's ear of it. Like that. I suppose graph paper, it's got an image on but you can't see it, a latent image. We then put it into these chemicals. You can get the chemicals from uh, the internet and stuff. Basically, develop a stop bar fixer. Um, danger wise, you know, if you want to add a bit of excitement, it's got metol in, so that's dermatitis, but so sort of washing powder and stuff if you're not careful. That's vinegar, so you could uh, put it on your chips if you wanted to, but don't bother, it tastes horrible. And that there is fixer. Um, it's the sort of stuff that makes silver soluble, so you'd stop drinking it after a few pints, to say, to say the least. So, uh, but if you're doing it with kids, don't let them near it. You do the processing, they can watch. Okay, so it goes under the developer, and hopefully the image will start to appear. So what we've got there is a negative image. So all the whites become black, and all the blacks become white. Um, and then you make a negative of the negative, and it becomes a positive. I don't want to get as if it's maths though, because like that will scare people off. There's too much in the way of a, you know, the correct diameter of a pinhole is. No, forget it. Just guess. Life's too short. Right, so it's been developed for a couple of minutes, then goes into the vinegar, which is stop bath, okay? It's called stop bath, and it's, um, yeah, a mild acid, really. Neutralizes the developer. Just give it a few seconds in there. Let it drain. Put it into the fixer, and the fixer basically washes off all the silver that hasn't been hit by light. And it goes in there for a couple of minutes, gets washed, and then um, we'll take it out and see how it looks. Right, normal lighting again because it's in the fixer. Been in there a few minutes, take it out. Again, using the print tongs. It is best to use print tongs. Sorry about earlier, I blame everyone else. And it goes in the wash. Just let it wash. Only a few minutes, it's fine for the wash. Let it dry. End up with your picture. Basically, this is a paper negative. Now, there's several ways of making them positive. Okay? The most simplest is, if people have got mobile phones to them, if, um, is you can put them onto inverse and you can see them in positive. So set the setting on the photographic section on inverse and you get a nice positive image. It's quite clever and very instant. Another way is photographing the photo with a digital camera, downloading it onto a computer and doing Photoshop inverse or PaintNet. It's a free version of the same sort of thing. So you can do inverse on that. Um, or you could stick the picture up. Here we go. You could actually put the picture up on the wall and stare at it without blinking for half an hour and then shut your eyes and for an instant you'll get a positive image. Which is a bit pointless, but 
you know, might as well be said, or you can put it under an enlarger. And I've seen some beautiful pictures done printing through photographic paper, using it as a paper negative underneath a piece of glass. But you need enlargers for that, so we don't bother with that one usually. Um, just sort of like scan them in, flatbed scanner, make them into positives, or leave them as negatives, negatives look odd in themselves. So that's how you can use a beer can camera. There's loads of stuff. Look on the internet, there's things of how to use them in different ways. You can put stuff inside, like leaf skeletons and stuff. You can photograph using that, so it mixes photograms with uh, pictures. Loads of things. In fact, basically, employ me to go and do a workshop rather than just being a skin flint and uh, watching it on the uh, computer.